Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. So previously, we made a start unboxing this package. It came from Cult Pens all the way in the UK. Last time, we took a look at the inks that were in the box. Today, it's the turn of the pen. So join me down on the mat. We'll unbox the pen, take a look at the ink, ink it up. I'll do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my first impressions of this pen. So here we are down on the mat. I've already taken the pen box out of the cardboard box, mainly because the cardboard box is too big to actually put under the camera. So what have we got here? We have got a Conklin All-American Golden Walnut. Now this is a limited edition pen and it's limited to 1,898, which is based on the year that Conklin was founded. Let me just turn this around, so here we go. We can see there a rough picture of the pen, limited edition, bottom is empty. Again, on the other side, we've got that same picture. I'm just going to come up here and hopefully get this into shot. There we go. So we can see here, this is number 1664 of 1898. We can already tell it's a walnut with gunmetal trim and it's a broad. The other end, we we'll just see the box. So let's take that box out of there. Can't get in. It's that well packed. Here we go. So here comes that inner box. So I'm just going to put that cardboard wrapper to one side for now. So the inside box, it's like a material feel. We've got Conklin, established 1898. The legendary name for fine writing instruments. Just going to quickly and slowly turn this around. Just look at the way that it's really got that gorgeous trim there. The way we've got that needlework showing through. Now, yes, I know it's all done on a machine. It's not handmade. But it's still nice to see. So let's open up the box. Here we go. So inside we reveal this gorgeous wooden pen. Just going to slide that out for a second. We'll take a look and see what else is in here. We've got this card. So what have we got in here? This looks like it's to do with the warranty and the pen refill instructions. Pop that to one side. In the lid, we've got another card. So here there's something about the actual pen, so I will read that later on. The actual pen itself, look, the pen case, look at this. We've got the Conklin logo there on the inside of the case. We've got this nice, gorgeous bed. The bed lifts up and it, we find we've got two ink cartridges. And then we've got a collection guide. So I can have a look and see what pens I'd like to get and then start begging the wife. Then pop that to one side. That's everything that's in there. I'll leave them two cartridges where they are for now. Let's put this to one side. Oh, that's a loud snap, isn't it? Just fetching my pen rest. Let's take a look at the pen in detail. So this is a wooden pen. Obviously it's walnut, golden walnut. The wood, it originates in Missouri in the USA. So that means because it's a wooden pen, each pen, the grain is going to be different. So they're virtually unique pens. Yes, there's lots which will look like it, but it's the grain which sets it apart. Let's slowly turn this around just so we can have a look at that grain. Look at the patterning in there. That's lovely to look at. Take a close look at the pen. So we've got a domed top. Then we come on down and it's tapering out. Tapers out to about the bottom of the clip. Now the clip is a spring loaded clip. We then come down and we've got a step down to the body. Yes, you can tell there's a step down, you can feel it, but it's not really something which I can see being too much of a nuisance. To my eye, the pen then stays roughly the same width until about halfway down that body. Then it starts tapering down until again, at the bottom we've got another dome. Now, if we take a look at the body here, we can see there it's got engraved. I can see all American. 
and then Toledo, USA, and then Conklin. So there's no mistaking what pen it is, is there? I'm going to turn it around so we see the back of the cap. That's where we see the number for the limited edition. Really nice looking pen. Let's take off the cap. So it takes half. There's one turn. There's one and a half turns. It feels very loose already. About two turns to come off. Not too bad, but look what it reveals. Isn't that a gorgeous nib? It's a black nib, and then that goes into a black section. Absolutely gorgeous. Really love the look of this. We'll take a closer look at the nib. We start at the top with the crescent filler, which I believe is proprietary to Conklin. Underneath that, we've got the Conklin logo. Then underneath that, we've got Toledo, and then USA. I love the color of that. I'm saying it's black. I don't think it is. I think it's what they call that gunmetal grey, which is a really dark grey, which is why certainly under the really bright lights I've got here, it looks virtually black to me. Coming to the section, the section slightly concave. So we start out with a little bit of a tiny lip that comes in and then it goes way out till we get to the threads. The threads, you can feel them with your finger, but they're not uncomfortable. And then there's a little tiny step up to when we come into the body. Let's take the body off there. So this section actually unscrews below the threads. That's nice to know. So you can't accidentally unscrew the section when you're taking the cap off. And that reveals a converter. Yes, a pen that comes with a converter. I wonder if they're taking lessons from the Chinese companies that always include a converter. That to me is, as silly as it sounds, is a really big selling point for any pen that it comes with a converter. Especially when you're spending 166 Aussie dollars, you don't want to be paying extra for a converter. It should be thrown in and that's what Conklin's done. Well done Conklin. So the converter, yeah, let's just goes down, goes up. Looks like a nice big converter, so I'm hoping we'll get a decent amount of ink into there. Let's just pop that back together. Lots of threads there to get it on. Unfortunately, it's metal, so you're not going to be able to eyedropper it. I'm just going to fetch in a different pen rest. And then what we'll do is we'll now do some comparisons with some other pens. Let me just straighten this up. I know it's a little bit my OCD catching on there. So the first pens I'm going to compare it to are a Pilot Metropolitan and Alami Safari. So I'm fetching these in just to get an idea for the size of the pen. Although it says it's an oversized pen, personally I don't think it is. I think it's just about spot on with these other pens. You know, slightly bigger but not that much. I'm also going to fetch in this. This is a Jinhao 9056. Doesn't that look remarkably similar? You know, if you were to look at them, apart from the clip, very little difference. Apart from the fact that this Jinhao it's an awful lot cheaper. But can we tell when we're writing? Can we tell the difference? And I can tell you, I don't know about this one, but with a lot of my other pens, there is such a difference in the writing experience between the Jin Hao and the one that it's inspired by. I'm going to say inspired by, not copied. I'm going to just quickly take off the caps for these. I say, because they're so similar. Can I get them next to each other? Look at that. Even when they're next to each other, I would say the section on the Conklin is slightly bigger. The nib, definitely longer though. And I love that grey colour, that dark grey of it. You know, I'd say it's nearly black. I'm going to just do a little experiment. Here's the Conklin lid. It fits onto the Jinhao. That's how close they are. So my final comparison, going to fetch in two pens. These pens are in the same price range as this. So as I say, this one cost me 166 Australian dollars. The first pen I'm going to fetch in is a Laban 325. This cost me 146 Australian dollars. I'm also going to fetch in a Visconti Breeze. And this cost me $163. So they're all very similar in terms of pricing. Let's take a look at these uncapped. Let's 
So uncapped, that Visconti is definitely the smaller of the three pens. Body-wise, it looks roughly the same length though. It's just the nib. It's got a really small steel nib on the Visconti. Whereas the other two pens, they've got those longer steel nibs. They're all steel nibs though, even though this one does look like it's gold. I love the look of this pen. Even compared to these, it does stand out. And I think that's because it's made of wood. It's, it's that natural look. And maybe I'm just getting a bit old fashioned in my old age, but I quite like the natural looking pens. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to step away and I'm going to give the pen a good clean out. When I come back, we'll take a look at the ink. We'll ink up the pen, do a writing sample, and I'll give you my first impressions. And I'm back. Now, one of the things I discovered when I was cleaning this out, the converter, it's not a push-in, it actually screws in. I love the idea. It makes it more secure. It means I can't accidentally pull it out. And that's the last thing we want to do. So what ink are we going to use in this? As a wooden pen, I thought, well, that limits me a little bit because I like to not, not exactly do matchy-matchy, but I like things to look very similar. So I thought, well, I'm going to go for a brown. And I haven't used this brown for quite a while. Diamine, tobacco, sunburst. Just going to fetch the pen over. I think... That's a fairly good match. I think there's a lot of the turns in the ink are being brought out in that body. And I hope when I write, we'll see a nice match coming through. I like in this where we get the paler turns. You know, that to me, it looks like a bit, I'm going to call it like a honey goldy colour. But then we've got the deeper colours as we get into the actual texture itself. Now, I believe this should be a really nice shading ink, which means with this broad nib, I'm hoping it looks really nice when I'm writing. Fetching Quickie Koala to hold the ink. and comes the ink. So as I say, Diamine Tobacco Sunburst. There we go. Let's take that cap off. And let's get that pen ready to be loaded. So I've already got the converter with that plunger all the way down to the bottom. Will it fit in the bottle? Yeah, just about. So I'm going to fetch the plunger up. I'm only going to do the one because look at that. We're virtually full to the top already. What a good filler that is. Just wipe off the pen and put it back together. And get rid of this ink bottle. Okay, let's fetch in the trusty notepad of testing. So this is Oxford Optic Paper, and it's in a black and red notepad. Don't know if we can see that there. There we go, black and red. This is an A5-sized notepad. I love this Optic Paper. I think it's a really nice paper for doing writing on, and I try to do all my writing tests on this paper. So let's jump in. What have we got? We have got a pen that doesn't write let me just go to one side and give this a quick clean off okay so the pen's not writing at all at the moment if i turn it on the side look here the tines not only are not aligned there's a massive gap in them so what i'm going to have to do is just try and sort this out so for me it may take a few minutes for you it'll just be a slide away okay i think i've got it sorted so if we now look at this, as you can hopefully see, their level, all I had to do was very easy. I just clicked it. Well, click, I'm saying clicked it. I just didn't have to do anything other than with my finger and thumb, just move it around and they all lined up. So let's try our writing sample again. So what have we got? We've got a Conklin. Yes, we're getting ink. All American. And it's got a broad nib. The ink is diamine, tobacco, sunburst. Look at that lovely shading coming out there. Drying times, immediate, 10 seconds. Doesn't look much of a difference, does that? 30 seconds. Look at that, after 30 seconds, that's already dry. So really no point in me doing it for a minute, is there? The next test, I'm going to move the mic so you can hear the pen right.
that's quite a nice writing experience. There's definitely, I'm not going to say it's glassy smooth, it's not. You can feel it writing. There's a nice tiny bit of feedback in there. You know, you can hear it writing as well. So you could hear that coming through. Hopefully the mic was able to capture that. Look at all the shading though. There's absolutely masses of shading coming through. Now, this has been described on a few websites as medium shading. Well, I'd hate to think what their idea of us really strongly shaded because I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. We've got yellows, we've got golds, we've got the pale browns. The places we've even got the darker brown. I think it looks really, really nice. I would say the colour, it's some kind of mainly yellow with little bits of olive colours in there which are contributing to the brown. But I absolutely love this. I think it looks really nice. Does it match tone-wise? Again, let's fetch that pen in. Look, there we go. I would say that's a really good match colour-wise between both the pen and the ink. A couple more little writing samples. How about flex? Do we get any line variation? Not really. But it's a stiff steel nib, so I think that's about right. I'm just going to go gently and then with a little bit more pressure. So on the downstroke, we can get a slightly wider line with a lot more pressure. Going across. I would say it's more of a darker line than a wider line going across. And as we see here on the S's, you know, we're getting something, but we're not getting a lot. So what are my first impressions of this pen? I love the looks, I really do. But I love the looks of that Jinhao 9056. And you can really see that 9056 is virtually a direct copy of this pen. The difference is they're so small, you might as well just not be there. In terms of that, I still think though that, that 9056 is a little bit too pale in colour for me. Whereas this, this gorgeous walnut colour looks really nice. I love the nib. You know, let me just take another look at that. I love the gunmetal. Just look at the way the light's playing on that. I think it's really nice. It's a nice size. It's very stiff. You can feel that when you're writing. It's a stiff nib. So you're not going to get any real line variation as we've already demonstrated. Still like it though. I was extremely disappointed that the tines were crossed. Fortunately, it was a really easy fix and literally took me about two seconds. And then I just did a little bit of writing to make sure it was bedded in properly. In this price range, I would say the other two pens that I brought in, the Laban and the Visconti, I've got to be honest, I think they do write nicer than this pen. You can really feel the stiffness of that nib. Now, if you like them stiffer nibs, it's going to be perfect for you. But for me, I just like a little bit of a softer nib when I'm writing. So that's maybe a downside for this pen. But it's brand new out the box. It could be as I get used to writing with it, as I use it more, the nib will come to fit me a little bit better. So I'm not going to say that that's a major issue. The pen comes in a variety of Joe nibs. So we've got extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 stub and Omniflex. As I said, I personally went for the broad. I really like broad nibs. If I was going to say anything, I would say this looks to me to be on the narrower side of broad, so tending towards medium, but that's fine. I also like medium nibs. I love the shading coming through that. I love the ink combination. To me, there's so much character in my writing when I'm looking at this, and that's part of what I like when I'm doing my writing so i like to see character coming out at the end of the day as long as the pen lets you get ideas out of your head and onto paper that's all it's meant to do but there's no reason why you shouldn't enjoy doing it at the same time so that's it for the conklin all american pen with that limited edition golden walnut with gunmetal trim i hope you've enjoyed today's video do you have a conklin pen do you have an all american what are your thoughts on them please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Remember, every time you like, every time you comment, well, it just helps other people to find my videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.